Hey guys, it's Monday, 11.52 p.m. on April 15th, 2019, and I want to share with you some of my observations of what I've noticed today regarding this cathedral fire in Paris, because there are some very interesting details that are worthy of our consideration, especially considering what the implications are about them. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, against the rulers of darkness of this world. And I intend to shake you up a little bit in pointing a handful of these things out. And for those of you who are not familiar with the topics I'm going to discuss and the details I'm going to share with you, I encourage you to please do some investigation. There are still some, some um, videos up on YouTube that will go into greater depth on some of the subjects I'm going to cover in this video, and I hope that you will please take the next steps to inform yourselves of the fact that our me mainstream media has not exactly been truthful with us in the last handful of years. And I think perhaps the best place for me to begin this video about the um, significance of the Cathedral Fire in Paris is to take you to the Twitter page of the Boston Globe, where exactly six years ago today, which is the event we would call the Boston bombing, the Boston Globe had foreknowledge of the event where their tweet on Twitter still remains to this day where they tweeted out, breaking news, police will have controlled explosion on the 600 block on Boylston Street. People, the dates of April 15th to April 20th have had significant value to the enemy of the people of God and to humanity. For the last handful of years, let me remind you of a few of the events that have involved fire and explosion between April 15th and April 20th, just over the last handful of years. They include the fire at Waco, Texas, the Oklahoma City bombing, Columbine, Deepwater Horizon explosion, just to name a few, and every single one of those events are plagued with, anal with anomalies as significant as this particular tweet, which remains on the Twitter page of the Boston Globe, where with foreknowledge of the quote-unquote controlled explosion, which ended up being a terrorist attack, they literally tweeted out minutes before saying, police will have controlled explosion on the 600 block on Boylston Street. Now, if you're not familiar with my channel, you may not know that the reason I started a little YouTube channel, it was called Truth, back in the day was because I had done some investigation into what is called the Fort McMurray and the Canyon fires, where I had noticed that the devastation that had happened in these fires was just outrageous. Entire neighborhoods were flattened, just flattened. They were dustified, just like what we had seen in September 11th. The debris field of these fires was like nothing anybody had ever seen before. It was cars were turned upside down. There was not a toilet. There was not a, um, a granite countertop. Nothing was left. And of the many things that, that reminded me of exactly what we saw in September 11th was this. White smoke. That is not what you see in a forest fire. That is not what you see in a structural fire. That is something that is not normal at all. So in the first video I did, I did a whole bunch of slideshows and I walked through and pointed out these anomalies of the Fort McMurray fire and the Canyon fire. And within just a year or two of me posting that video, all the crazy stuff that started happening in California fires where the exact same debris field of nothing but dustified buildings remained came true and started happening. So, since I have been covering these strange fires where you see this orange glow, which is like the orange glow here that we see in the background of September 11th fire. If you look here where this gal is standing in this thing, you see this, this strange orange glow. You know, that there was this weird orange glow that happened in September 11th. It's, it marked the way that the, the building burned, and yet the building itself was just consumed in this white smoke. It's just like what I saw in the Fort, Fort McMurray fires and in the Canyon fires. And I've been pointing this out in my channel in the California fires and all this for a long time. Because what you, what you actually see in a house fire is black smoke. What you see in a structural fire, an open air fire where you're burning carbon, is you will see soot from the unburned material 
in a, the wildly inefficient combustion process of an open air fire. You don't have to be a physics major or a chemistry major to understand that an open air combustion fire is very inefficient and soot is, is, is what makes this black. It's just the, it's just the Im, incomplete burnt pieces of, on a very small level that are being blown up into the air. That's what the smoke is. And yet we didn't see black in any of the structural fires of the Fort McMurray or the Canyon Fire or the California Fire. So when I got a phone call today asking me if I knew that Notre Dame was on fire, the first question I asked was what color is the smoke and what color is the flames? Were the flames this electrified plasma color orange? Or were we going to see something that looked more like a house fire? this deeper orange that you see in a real fire that we can document. There's hundreds of these normal fires that have been recorded. Or were we going to see something that looked more like this electric flame here? Unfortunately, folks, it's the electric flame. What we see here in the Notre Dame pictures is something that looks more like arc welding. And the white flame, the white almost, I mean, the white smoke and almost a yellowish green smoke. There is something here, folks, going on that is not normal. This is not normal. This is not normal. I want to take you here to an image of this particular um, grid here that shows you every single line of this particular piece of structure. Every single inch of it is on fire. This looks more like the briquettes in a hibachi grill after the grill has been seasoned and burning for about 45 minutes. It takes time to get every single inch of the briquettes on fire. And yet, you guys, these are not chemically treated. In fact, let's take a look here at the spire. Every inch of the internal structural components of this building on the outside, on the inside, in the spire, the entire thing, it's like it's, like it's been electrocuted. This is not, these are not flames. This is some sort of an arc, an arcing electromagnetic weirdness with a yellow, greenish, white smoke. And it's not just in one picture. It's in all of them, you guys. It's critical to recognize what is, what they're showing us. People, this is not normal. There is something very weird happening here. And we have to recognize this and be willing to confront the uncertainty of this and just say, I know what they're telling us isn't true. And let me show you a couple of things that they're telling us that aren't true. They declared this building to be an entire loss within 100 minutes of the flame starting. Every, this is within 100 minutes of this fire starting. They declared everything is burning. Nothing will remain from the frame. And if you look at the frame of the building that I just showed you here, where you see every single inch of this, every single inch of every single structural support is quite literally, quite literally on fire. Look at this. How did this happen? I've only seen this one time in the entire world where I've ever looked at this, and this happens to be what we saw in, in the people driving out of the California fires, where these trees, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit play here, and I want you to look at this, where these trees are are engulfed. I mean, they're, they're, they're like the briquettes that you see in a hibachi grill. This is not normal. This is not what happens to trees in a normal outdoor fire, guys. The trees catch on fire and the flame goes. The entire tree and the, all the structure of the building does not turn into this briquette-like flame. Now, I'm not going to say that I know what happens. There will be a lot of people out here that are going to be telling you that this is um, you know, directed energy weapons. They're going to say these are lasers. And there's a lot of evidence that we have had, that we have had some weapons over the last decade or so that, that could do something like this. But my point is not to actually ask what is doing this, but to point you to the truth of who is behind this, because there's no doubt about that. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. First, let me take you to some other things that need to be pointed out about the news coverage here. And I want you to recognize that somehow the deputy mayor of Paris worked with the people at this cathedral to remove the artwork 
in time. And he's going to tell us that he had time to do that. But and, and yet, at the exact same news co conference, they admitted that within 100 minutes, they knew everything was burning and nothing will remain from the frame of the fire, which means this fire spread with such rapidity. And, and let me put this into perspective, guys. I went to a mall in Chandler, Arizona over Christmas. I don't usually go to the mall, but just to give you an idea of how big, I've been to Notre Dame, I've been to Paris, I have, I have stayed across the street from this in a beautiful hotel, it was a beautiful building. The, the size of this building is hard to imagine if you've never been there. It's like what I, I, I can only compare it to the, 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 the spread of the Chandler Mall where you have the Nordstrom's at one end and the JCPenney on the other. It would be like a fire starting in the shoe department in Nordstrom. And within a hundred minutes, them saying that JCPenney was a total disaster. It's a long, long, long distance for these fires to have spread if that were the case. And yet, obviously, obviously, guys, what we're seeing here is not a normal fire because every single inch of the structural integrity of the building is what caught on fire, which it's not even catching on fire as I'm showing you. These have become briquettes of carbon for, for, for fodder of fire. So let's, let me just point out one more time. He said that the building frame was demolished and there was nothing remaining of the frame within 100 minutes of the fire starting. And yet, I want you to listen to the deputy mayor of Paris talk about how they had time to get all the precious stuff that they could out of, out of the cathedral. But do you have any sense whether are any of the artwork or artifacts inside have been saved? Well, the Ministry of Culture and, and our services and the Louvre Department have been cooperating to make sure that everything that can be saved and moved has been moved. We have been sending trucks from, from the, the City Department of Transportation and, and, you know, the collaboration between the state and between the city of Paris is very, very close and very tight tonight. Sure. So and things are being under control. So some things have been taken out of the church then? There have, some things have oh, been yes, rescued? Oh, yes, yes, Some paintings and, yes, there have been elements, you know, being taken away because when it started seven, started at the roof. So it was, you know, the reaction of, of uh, the bishop team and, and, and I would say the administration, of course, to react. Yes. To protect, you know, the of values course. they could take out, so they did. Well, that's good to hear because we didn't know whether anything at all had been had been saved from the church. So that is wonderful to hear that at least yeah, some yeah, things. Yeah, there, there are many things being saved and transported. Okay, this is absolutely. This should be chilling to you people. This was a fire that started on the roof. There is no way a normal fire starting on the roof could not have been put out. You guys, this building caught on fire in history and they stopped it when all they were working with was buckets. There's no reason with today's modern technology that this fire beginning on the roof could not have been stopped. There's no way. This is absolutely absurd. It is important for you people to look at what is actually burning. I'm going to one more time, I'm going to show you that what is actually burning here, guys, is the interior, the, the, the frame of the building. Every single inch of this building has been turned into briquettes. There's something, and I say briquettes like charcoal. Okay, there's something super wicked going on here, super wicked. The only thing that we can do to make sense of this, guys, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if they used directed energy weapons or if it was some strange, uh, you know, controlled demolition or whatever people want to say, you know, even if you want to say this was a cigarette, but it doesn't matter how this fire started. What you have to know, folks, is that it would be impossible for the folks at the Louvre to go get a truck to pull all the stuff out of there within 100 minutes before the place was declared a disaster. There is obviously something else happening here. Now, if you don't want to recognize the, the obvious then please turn this video off and go watch your mainstream media news. But be before you do, at least consider what I'm saying here, that, that we have the explanation in the scriptures. Our God has been 
wonderful enough to give us the explanation of what we're looking at. What we're looking at, you guys, is spiritual warfare that has been manifested into this, 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 this real world scenario. The prince of the power of the air, you guys, is Satan. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against prince, princes of darkness, the principalities of darkness, of spiritual wickedness in high places. And what the Bible explains in Ephesians 6 is that there's only one way to fight this. As many people are going to say, oh, this has to do with directed energy weapons and, and many other things that they're going to come up with. No, what the Bible tells us, you guys, is that there's only one way to fight this battle, and that is with the full armor of God. So let me tell you what the full armor of God is. The full armor of God consists of the helmet of salvation, which has to do with being saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, who laid down his life to make atonement for your sins and your faith in him and his, his work on the cross that covers your sins. That's the helmet of salvation. It's the breastplate of righteousness. It's the girdle of truth. Your loins girt about with the truth. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Your sword of, of truth, which is the we only weapon we have in our arsenal. That is the word of God, the actual logos of God, which is the word made flesh. It's the word of Jesus Christ. And the shield of faith. Those are the only weapons in our arsenal. If you are not aware of what the Bible teaches about spiritual warfare, you need to learn because that is what we're witnessing here. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, against the rulers of darkness of this world. And that, my friends, is what we're looking at here. And it's time to recognize that these wicked rulers in high places are backed by Satan. That is the only explanation for why this stuff is actually happening and what we're actually seeing. And if you're foolish enough to believe that this has to do with humans, that this is just some spiritual, you know, this has nothing to do with spiritual stuff, that this has to do with humans, you guys are going to get lost in this. And the bigger issue, you guys, is that God gave us this, these explanations for things in the Bible so that we can have eternal life through Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of our sins so that we can be free of this bondage that we have to this, this, this present evil world. So hopefully this makes sense to you guys and uh, I will keep you posted if I come across any other details of interest. So have a good night.